Um, he did have a, one really good pass, that touchdown pass. Uh, it looked really well, or looked really good, but then again, two for eight, you're not going to be winning a lot of games, so sell him. I'm going to have to buy him because, uh, let's see, I mean, like, if the Broncos are willing to equip him with the right tools and build up that team for him, I feel like he has a chance. Um, his accuracy is off. We all know that. He can work on that. We got the off season. Um, but uh, he's got the right mindset, and you don't see a lot of players out there that have the mindset of Tebow that are that hardworking and that determined to be successful out on the field. So I'm going to buy him. I'm selling him. Um, I'm selling him to the Packers. I'm going <laughs> to give him Matt Flynn, and he's going to step up and be a franchise quarterback. Uh, I'm not into the Tebowing. I don't, I don't like to see that. And if you're only throwing the ball eight times a game and running at the rest, you're bound to get hurt just like Michael Vick. I'm going to sell. I, I think, like I said, if, they, if the Broncos are willing to invest money in the system, but why would they invest when this year there's a lot of good quarterbacks coming out in the market that can actually run a real pro offense? There's no doubt the option offense, simple offense, can work. It did dominate the NFL for like 60 years before there was a pass. So it's been shown to work, but it's been a long time. I don't know. Well, I guys, can't the right it. answer on that one was buy because it's my show, and I can say it, would, which is the right answer. He is 3-1, so that's why I'm going to buy him for right now. But we'll move on. We'll stick in the NFL here. Uh, the Texans just lost Matt Schaub, their starting quarterback for the year. They're 7-3 and three and ahead of the AFC South. Uh, can, can they stick up there with Matt Leiner to see the answer? Joey, why don't you start? Uh, I would buy. Um, I had the same injury that he had, a Liz Franck injury, and tearing a ligament, there's no coming back from that. Uh, Matt Leiner, I have a lot of confidence in him. 7-3 um, and three is a good record to come in and try to carry an offense. Uh, they can afford to lose one or two more games uh, while he builds up the confidence. So yeah, I would buy Matt Shub, or I would buy Matt Leinart. I would uh, also buy him. I think that he's proven when he played for the Arizona Cardinals that he can step up and play football and do what he's meant to be doing. And it just thinks that Schwab is out for the season and hopefully they can come back next year and maybe even Leinart will bring him to the playoffs. I'm also going to buy. Uh, I guess Leonard's been a real like workout warrior mentality this year, and he's finally done living in college. Now he's a pro player. He's not doing beer bongs with high school kids anymore like that when he was in Arizona. <laughs> he's kicked the habit, I think. But I've heard really good things. All the teammates like him. The coaches like him. I think he can at least get him to the playoffs or at least sustain it. He had to grow up sometime. I mean, it was, it was frankly embarrassing the things he was pulling over there when he was in Arizona. He could have been their franchise quarterback. They traded a lot for Kevin Cobb didn't make sense. So I'm going to agree with the buy. I think it's his time to step up and uh, move on as an elite quarterback. Well, we'll not go elite yet, but a, a good quarterback in the NFL. But we'll stick to the NFL one more time here. and Let's talk about those San Francisco, San Francisco excuse me, 49ers out there out <laughs> west. Is it fool's gold? They're 8-1. and one. Are they the real deal, Tyrell? We'll start with you. Um, I think they're good enough to win their division. I don't know if they're the real deal, but they don't play in a real division. Every NFL team out west is awful. And I've always been a big Alex Smith fan, but, I mean, he's had a lot of turmoil, different coaches, but I finally think Harbaugh and that staff has finally got an offense set up around him and the mentality it's that he doesn't have to win games. He can just kind of be a game manager, they say. So I think it's a good buy that they'll at least make the playoffs. I'd, I would buy him, too. Uh, they, he stepped up this season, and even last week, this Sunday, they played without Frank Gore, showing that they're still a great team and that their defense even is even better and they could even be a potential threat in the playoffs. I completely agree. Uh, without Frank Gore, I didn't know if they would win, and they proved me wrong. But like Tyrell said, they easily have the worst division in football. It's pretty easy to go 8-1 and one in that. But they have a lot of talent and a lot of energy, so I see a lot of good things coming from them. I'm going to sell them because, like you said, they're weak in their division. Um, there's more than just a division in the NFL. They're going to have to sometimes go outside there and play the real teams that are out in the NFL, and that's where gonna, they're going to lose. You know, I, They're 8-1, but when you play not, not very good teams, you're going to be 8-1. Well, my take on the situation here is they are 8-1. They've only played two of those bad division teams this year, so they got a lot to go. They are 8-1. They've proved they can go on the East Coast and beat people. And then the 6-2 and two, um, Giants came in last week, and, uh, you know, they made it look pretty easy against them. So, uh, you know, I think the 49ers are the real deal this year. So buy is definitely the right answer. But we're going to move on. Like I said, we're going to go to that East Coast there. The Philadelphia Eagles, that dream team over there, adding all those uh, big free agents. Is that the biggest disappointment you guys can remember in a football team? We'll start with you, Kelly. Um, I'm selling the Eagles. I sell them this summer. Um, it literally was a dream because uh, uh, it was really hyped up. They're 3-6 and six right now. 
they have so many injuries. Um, just this weekend, Jeremy Macklin went out. Uh, their cornerback, Dem uh, Dominique Clamardi, went out with an ankle injury. So it's just stacking up trouble for them, and uh, I'm selling them. I would sell them, too. I think they're easily the, big the biggest disappointment in a long time in the NFL. Vic can't find rhythm. He just broke ribs. Uh, Deshaun Jackson misses game because he sleeps in too late and misses a meeting. That's just careless, and it doesn't even look like it's a building year for them. It looks like they're just all sorts of messed up, so I would sell them. I'm going to buy them. I think uh, they can come away with the season <laughs> strongly. Uh, Deshaun will start waking up on time. Vic will hear, heal from two broken ribs. He did the same thing last season. Uh, Vic is a great player. He's always mentally prepared, and he's learned from his mistakes, and he's trying to make it better. Yeah, like you guys said, they got a boatload of talent. I talked about those free agents, you know, Dominic Rogers, Camardi, Nambi Asma, guys like that. You know, they have all the talent there, but what they, where, where they're lacking is on both offensive lines, and that's where a lot of games are won in football. So I don't think that they can really do that, but, you know, they're having a tough season. The most tenured coach in the league, Andy Reid, does he hold on to his job after this season? I think he holds on to his job. Um, he's too much of an elite uh, coach to let him go, but he's got to be pretty frustrated with, you know, the bad luck that he's having with injuries and with Vic really finding no, no fluidity, no, you know, he just doesn't seem comfortable. And I think it's just because there's so many injuries and he's just feeling really nervous. Yeah, I think he'll keep his job as well. Um, he, uh, he just needs to get his team on the same page and then they'll be good to go. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut you guys off there. I do think he keeps his job as well just because of all the success he's had. But let's take a look at one more time what makes UWL so great. L Fact University of Wisconsin Lacrosse is ranked the number two college in the Midwest. UW Lacrosse is ranked number 34 for out of state students among public universities nationwide. UW Lacrosse is ranked as one of the most military friendly schools in the nation. UW Lacrosse is number 24 among medium colleges and universities for Peace Corps volunteers. Welcome back to Sports Scene. I'm not going to run over those scores for you. You can take a look at them over my left shoulder. We're just going to dive right into it here. We already talked about the NBA, so let's switch it over to college hoops. There was just a 24-hour marathon on last night, a college tip-off. What do you guys think uh, is, is in uh, hold for this year? Uh, Grant, we'll start with you. Um, I'm excited for the year. I'm personally a big fan of March Madness, so I'm just looking forward to that. But one thing that really caught my attention and made me more excited for the college hoops season is the Veterans Day game. It played on an aircraft carrier, and it was the first outdoor game ever. Uh, they gave 5,000 tickets to veterans and 750 to both schools. It was UNC versus Michigan State. And it was just a big game, and it was a good day for veterans and America. America. I agree. Uh, I think Ohio State will be a powerhouse. It will be very tough for Wisconsin to beat them. Um, I think the team to beat overall is going to be North Carolina. They showed a lot of potential in that game, and... I don't really see them winning this year, or losing this year. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Like, North, North Carolina is looking stacked with Barnes, Zeller, and Henson. I feel like no one's going to be able to beat them. And i also like to note that both the AP poll and coaches poll have North Carolina, Kentucky, and Ohio State leading the top of the poll, so no differences there. I think the Badgers are going to have another year where they just kind of plod through the Big Ten and then play some competition that's out of their league and lose. But we'll probably win a Big Ten title, but not a national title. Another year of Bo Ryan Ball. But it's 
It's one of those years for Wisconsin. You, ne you never sh know what you're going to get. I'm afraid if Jordan Taylor doesn't score 20 points, he's uh, you know the Badgers aren't going to get it done. But Joey, one thing I want to touch on there, I do think Coach K and Duke and those guys over there can find a way to win and find a way to beat UNC. So I don't think they will uh, go undefeated. But let's switch it up here a little bit. Let's go back to the NFL. Uh, one of our favorite clowns in the NFL, as I like to call him, Rex Ryan, cussed out a fan at the halftime of the Patriots game. So I called him a clown. What do you guys think? Is he a good coach or is he just a clown? I'll start with you, Kelly. He's a clown, a straight-up clown, and um, he's a character. He, this doesn't surprise me at all, but um, he was clearly frustrated. It's a big game against the Patriots, a big rival for him, and uh, he's he's an NFL coach. He's got to learn to control his emotions like that. Um, uh, the, what the fans said wasn't even that big of a diss, so I don't know why he was getting all worked up about it, but he's got to learn to control himself. Yeah, he's definitely a clown. If you're... Uh talking to the fans when you don't need to. They're not on your team. They're not part of your game. Nothing. It's kind of just like Ron Artest running into the crowd and starting to fight. It's just pointless to even comprehend it. I, I kind of beg to differ. I think he's really emotional and he's very optimistic about his, about his team all the time. And it shows a good thing that he's enthusiastic. Like maybe he shouldn't have sna snapped at the uh, fan, but it just shows that he has so much enthusiasm. And he gets caught in the moment like everybody else, but He's just a, he's hard to love. It's a price to pay though, because he could be facing up to a fifty thousand dollar fine, and that's not money that I have. Pocket change for him though. It's true. He's an NFL coach. He can afford that. He's a hothead, yes, but he's good for the league. I mean, he's a character that people love to love him or hate him. He's good for the league, and he's very emotional. He's very passionate. I think he's a great motivator of his team. They're not playing like it, but I think if he was my coach, I think I'd be pretty motivated a lot of the time. He's always in your face, right up front. He's funny. He's just Oh, he's a character. He's definitely a character, and he's definitely doing something right over there. They've been to two uh, straight AFC Championship games, so you can't argue with that, that he's a, a pretty good coach. But it's, it's just getting annoying. He's been like this since he's been in the league. It's like an ex-girlfriend that won't stop calling you back. I've heard this record before. I didn't like it the first time, so I didn't buy it. So, Rex Ryan, enough of this. Just start coaching football. We are sick of that stuff. But let's start uh, talking about his team, the Jets. The last two years over to the AFC Championship, excuse me, AFC Championship game, they just lost a tough game to the Patriots. You guys think they're a playoff team? I do. I think uh, if they start playing LT and getting him the ball, maybe run the halfback screen, uh, they'll, they'll start making some plays. they got Santonio Holmes to go deep to, and Matt San or Mark Sanchez is starting to step up his game and learn what the NFL is about. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they might get a wild card there. We are going to have to end it here. Let's take a look at these scores here. I haven't updated them in a second, but uh, we're going to go right now. Tyrell with 29, Grant with 33. Joey with 34 and Callie with 32. So I'll race them if you didn't win. We'll do it that way. Oh. Not Callie, I'm sorry. You looked great, though. <laughs> Joey, oh. not for you either. So it's those guys on the left there. Who are you thinking? I'm going with my man Tyrell right there. He's got a Chad Henney jersey on. Anybody that has that uh, you know, much courage to wear a, a Chad Henney jersey on the air <laughs> deserves to win. So FaceTime, it's yours, Tyrell. Take it away. Well, I'm not going to be selfish with my FaceTime. I'm going to talk about the Cooley Me Region Humane Society Telethon that's going on this Friday. There's some abandoned cats, there's some abandoned dogs. These dogs need your love. They need only, all they want is your money and your attention and your love. Like $75 for a cat or a dog is not that much. Someone needs to adopt these pets. Yeah, it's a great thing that uh, WMCM, our TV station, is putting on. So be sure to tune in to that. It's on Saturday at 7 o'clock on KQEG. And be sure to join us this Thursday for our Week in Review. Here's our news portion. Uh, it's at 4.30 on Thursday, Campus Channel 6, Charter Channel 96, and Digital Channel 989. We'll see you next time. High energy in sports.